Professor Castanevas, uh, you started with a sporting metaphor in order to depict uh, scientific research. Could you please explain to us it? Yes, uh, I, I believe that it, the scientific community is a community that is, uh, has its internal rules. It was created, uh, if you remember, after the death of Socrates by, uh, by condemned by Athens, they started, uh, they started schools. It was uh, Lyceum, it was the Academy, in order to create a space where science could be, uh, could be studied. And truth also can be protected, because truth, when it first comes out, is not adapted to the environment. It has sometimes to live in a certain environment. And this is what happens with our institutions, with our labs and all this. This has also the result that some people look at from outside and it looks, to, it seems to them as if it was a strange sport where they don't know the rules. This is the case for me in baseball. I, n I'm never, uh, I never understand why people are happy or they're sorry or why they are crying. It looks a, a little bit ridiculous, if you wish. Well, most of society, I believe, looks science a little bit like that. They cannot, they cannot understand. And I think in my, in my speech uh, this evening, I will try to explain how people from inside feel this kind of, uh, of uh, endeavor to search for the truth. You also mentioned other two very significant metaphors. One involves a ladder and the other one involves a chain. Could you explain them as well? Well, I said that uh, we just made a magnificent discovery. The discovery of the Higgs was last year. And we understood very well things of the uh, small world, of the subatomic world. At the same time, in March 2013 uh, of this year, the satellite Planck told us about uh, many things about the cosmologic, cosmology. And we understand even better what happened in the first moments of the Big Bang. So for the first time, we have two points where we understand very well the theory and the problem is what happens in between all the scales of structure and energy that are between this so, uh, i found that it reminded me of uh, two metaphors the first is a, a metaphor of ancient greece that uh, was also in roman times which is called the golden chain of homer homer at some point he's angry with other gods and tells them if you try to take me down with a golden chain, you will not, but I can take the golden chain up and take all you, the mountains, and everybody. And this was the feeling in the antiquity that all things are related and all the scales of the cosmos are related. And of course, you have another metaphor in medieval times, and this was the, 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 the ladder, the cosmic ladder, where it is the famous, actually the name, the guy who invented it, St. John of, of the Climax, the Climax is the ladder, and uh, he dreamt that he found a ladder that went and talked directly to God, and this was the cosmological metaphor of the Middle Ages for many years. Again here, we want to know all the steps of the ladder, between, as I, I said, again, the physics of the infinitely small and the physics of the infinitely large. Which is the importance, or rather, to what extent passion, love, feelings are important in, uh, in scientific research? They are very important because uh, you enter in science sometimes as you enter in religion, in the sense that in order this discovery of Higgs it took 40 years. You have really to believe to that, to really uh, have a big passion for what you're doing, to discover inside reality types of order, and this should be an exciting thing for you, as it was for Pythagoras, uh, between the harmonies of the world and the harmonies of his soul, and there was consonance, because he thought that it was, there was uh, uh, re the one reply to the other. So you need to have that. You have to expect one or two big joys of discovery, not too many. We discover at most two or three joy, uh, truths in our lives, not many more than that. And also, and this is what I repeat all the time, you have to manage uncertainty. You really need, 
you are very often at crossroads, at moments where you have discovered a few things, and then the question is, what's next? How, where should I go? We'll try it again. Okay, a bit louder. Dimmi pure quando posso. Uh, to what extent passions, feelings, in a, in a sense, love, are important in scientific research? I believe they are very important. Uh, in some sense, you enter in science as you enter in religion. Since, as we know, in order to discover uh, anything, you need sometimes to wait 40 or 50 years. And this is what happened with the Higgs. Uh, and so, every scientist has at least two or three big discoveries in his life that can live and then it's a um, tremendous joy also we know again if we want to be again in the metaphors and in the comparisons with the let's say philosophy we have in the poetics of aristotle he says that tragedy puts the man in some uncertain situation where the issue is of the issues are uncertain in order to reveal his character, his efforts. And very often the scientists, more often than when, that what they dis discover, it is they are, they are in front of a crossroad and they have to decide where to go, what is the next experiment, what is the next theory, and, and this is the basic activity of science. So I say very often, people outside think that science manages certainly while, on the contrary, it manages uncertainty. And this is, the scientist is the manager of uncertainty. And manager is a bad word, because it doesn't mean it is the, the person that has to deal with uncertainty or the data. Thank you very much, Professor. I do really hope to see you again in a future edition of the festival. Thank you very much.